Howdy there guys and gals. On today's episode, we're going to get to blasting with sand and water. But more importantly, I'm going to show you why if you go cheap on the blaster, don't go cheap on the sand. So today, I'm going to try to sand pressure wash that eight and three quarter housing that I'm building for my 69 Dodge Dart. Dodge Whisper picked up this cheap pressure washer sandblaster off Amazon. I think it was a whopping 30 bucks, so we're going to try it out. It comes with a blaster nozzle, a pickup for the sand, a pickup hose, some little twisty hose clamps, extra tips, and they even give you some safety glasses. This is a very cheap kit, and I bought cheap sand. And not only did I buy cheap sand, I bought the wrong sand. Let's see why. So this pressure washer sandblaster uses regular, ordinary sand. Mainly sand for sandboxes. I've been told that you're supposed to use the play sand. They didn't have any. They just had this all-purpose sand. Here's the problem. The hardware store where I got it from stores it outside. So every single one of these bags was full of moisture. Yep, the sand is wet. And based off extensive YouTube research, this sand needs to be dry in order to work. So unfortunately, I've got to dry this sand out, which is ironic considering I'm about to mix it with water at a high pressure. So in an effort to dry this sand out, I've got it sitting on top of this cardboard box, mainly because the uh, slab is full of rocks. And the number one thing they say is don't get any rocks or pebbles in this. That's why they recommend using play sand. Well, I thought this all-purpose sand that said for sandboxes would work. Unfortunately, I keep finding pebbles, rocks, and shells in it. I don't think this sand's going to work too well. And I don't know how long it's going to take to try it out. This might be a big fail. But we're still going to try. Several hours later, I've now upgraded to window screens. Do yourself a favor. Buy the right sand. This is going to take way too much time there's something to be said that i've lowered myself to this level of making a video about screening sand again folks if you are going to do this buy the right sand i don't even know if this thing works yet and i'm already tired of this project and after copious amounts of screening sand you're left with this ending product hopefully this will run through the sand blaster and hopefully this will be enough to do that axle all the videos i've watched on this it says the number one thing keep the sand dry so i got this five gallon bucket with this apparent easy off lid i'm gonna punch a hole in it just enough for that thing to fit and then i don't know maybe duct tape it that way uh Water can't get in. Oh, yeah. See, that's simple. So, yeah. There it goes. Put it in the bucket. Drop this thing in there. Pick up the hose. I think it's pretty self explanatory because um, it's got to be. Because I uh, had all this stuff. No instructions at all. Oh, that uh, that broke immediately. So um, yeah, don't tore a card. Oh, and don't worry, uh, it can only be removed with vice grips now. Fantastic. And I guess you take this thing and well, well, go ahead and get your hose clamp. That's most definitely going to break now that you've proven that. Put that on there. S snug is key, uh, I assume, with this. You know, it's a very, very simple setup. Hopefully it works. All I'm trying to do is get all the rust out of the inside of that axle. Most part, looks dry-ish. Now you just take this thing through your hole. All right, now we got to get the rest of this thing set up. Well, since it's hotter than Hades here in Texas, Dodge Whisperer lent me his Tajma Dodge Hall. So let's set that up real quick and then we'll get to blasting. And there it is, the Tajma Dodge Hall. 
let's get this axle set up and uh let's see how bad this goes all right got my eight and three quarter set up in the tajma dodge hall got this makeshift sandblaster pressure washer dodge whisperer just got it gassed up my main area of concern is the inside of this axle i want to get all the scale out and get these tubes cleaned and inside you know basically you get all the rust on the inside out and if you can remove all the stuff on the outside that would be fantastic too i've never used anything like this so i don't know how well it's going to go i do know as soon as i stick that wand inside that axle it will shoot immediately into my face so safety glasses all right let's try this thing out all right so i've got the wand on we can go and see if it sucks down This thing is working fantastic. I don't know if y'all can tell, but it's actually pulsing. It seems to grab a good bit of sand and then shoots it. But it's taking the paint and all the old gas material off like it's nothing. Let's do the inside, because that's where it's gonna hit me in the face. fantastic but it will fill this differential full of sand so you're gonna have to wash the living crap out of it after you're done who would have thought using a pressure washer sandblaster would not wash it I'm trying to keep the bucket dry, but every once in a while you gotta shake it to get that sand to fall. feeling I'm running low on sand. Let's take a look. So the bucket's got about that much sand left in it, so it uses a lot. I'm going to top it off, and then we'll get back to it. All right, dumping the rest of that bag that we sifted this morning, topped off the bucket. And that's the last bit of my sand. So let's see if we can finish this axle. My rest of my sand, I mean, I am not sifting those other two bags way too long. It does not take long to fill that dip up full of sand. So if you're going to do differentials with any type of mechanical parts, expect to clean a lot. Blasting. Let's pressure wash it and get it cleaned out, and then we'll take a look. Now, 
got more wet pressure washing than I did sandblasting. Well, it's dirty, it's messy. I think it did a pretty good job. Now, based off the number on this camera, that took me 37 minutes. Let's see how good it did. Clean these glasses, I can't see a dang thing. I think this job would be a lot harder with a face shield. All right, let's take a look. 37 minutes and two heavily, heavily screened sacks of sand and a $30 Amazon pressure washer sand blaster. I did miss some spots, but overall, this really took it off. Dodge Whisper and I were looking at this axle before I started, and we we're pretty confident the outside coat was a very, very old powder coat, and it was thick. But as you can tell, the inside came out really clean. Again, I missed some spots. Unfortunately, it will fog up your glasses. Now, many of y'all will say you need to wear a face shield. If you feel you need to, I would. It was hard enough to see out of safety glasses. And with my experience with pressure washing with a face shield, is it usually fogs up and gets covered up quick, and then you can't see what you're doing. I will say, though, this thing took off that thick powder coat or maybe just industrial paint very quickly. It even exposed my poor welding. Oh, look. Yep. Oh, maybe this blaster's not that great. It makes my welding look worse. Hmm. Might need to clean that up. Did a great job cleaning out these flanges. Both of them look very clean. Again, I missed some spots. But overall, I would say this $30 pressure washer sand blaster does great. Here's the downside. Is that bucket. Now, I just did this method because I had saw some other people online do this. I would highly recommend if you can make a hopper bucket, that would be the way to go. Even though they give you this self-feeding line that you plop into the sand, if y'all noticed, y'all couldn't see the bucket, but every time I came over here, I had the lid on, but I was grabbing this hose and doing this a few times, and shaking that sand. I bet you if you put this thing on a hopper setup, it would work 10 times better. Because once that sand hits that nozzle, it just starts rocking and rolling. If you noticed, it pulsed quite a bit, and every time it pulsed, the metal turned gray. And that's where it did its best work. So for 30 bucks, I'd say it's pretty good. All right, now to let the Texas heat do its work. We're gonna let this thing dry off and then get it in some paint before it rusts up again. But at least now this gives me time to take a break. Maybe a taco break. Now that this is cleaned out and then washed out, I'm gonna throw it into some paint. I'm gonna use all this rust converter on the inside and then throw some primer on the out. All right, it looks dry enough for my standards. In an effort to save some coin, I've got a whole bunch of this paint left from painting the crew cab frame. So we are actually going to brush it on. Sorry about the wind, folks. It's actually windy today. Well, there it is. A very, very brushed on paint job. Yeah, there's a, a lot of, there's a lot of brush marks in this. Let's go in under the car so we don't need to worry about it. It's not pretty by any means. But it's all one color and it's not rusted up anymore. You can see all the brush marks. But I already had that paint. And it's perfect for an axle. So we'll let this dry out. And then when we get it installed, I'll paint the top marks that I probably missed because of the jack stand. 
Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. That sandblaster pressure washer worked pretty good, and for 30 bucks, ain't too bad. But remember, keep your sand dry and make sure you get sand without rocks in it. Because if you do, it's actually a pretty cheap alternative. Though I will say, it makes a mess. A really, really big mess. Stick around, because next time, maybe we'll build an axle. Heck, maybe we'll put it in a car.